Is the Raspberry Pi dead to me? Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Today, I wanna to take just a few minutes and do a bit of a head-to-head -head comparison between the Raspberry Pi and the Evolve laptop. Now, there are several reasons I've always been a fan of the Raspberry Pi. A, it's compact size, B, it's low power consumption, and C, it's low cost. But can the Evolve laptop compete on any of those fronts? Well, let's kind of look at that today and see what you guys think. The first thing that I started looking at was the power consumption of the Raspberry Pi on a 12 volt source. Now, if we just look at the Pi itself, the consumption is about 350 milliamps per hour from a 12 volt source but that doesn't take into account any sort of display. Now you can go with something like a tablet, but at some point that tablet is going to need to be recharged as well. So we have to look at that when we're considering the total power consumption of the Raspberry Pi system. Now let's assume that you use something like the Rotom 15 inch monitor that I showed not too long ago on the channel. That monitor adds about 420 milliamps to the equation. So we've got 420 plus the 350 milliamps from the Raspberry Pi for a total of 770 milliamps per hour being drawn from that system. One of the other monitors that I have featured on the channel is the EVI CIV. 10 inch touchscreen monitor. That's the one where the Raspberry Pi mounts in the back of the monitor. If you use that combination, then we're looking at about 650 milliamps of consumption for that complete Raspberry Pi system. Now, let's compare that to the power consumption of the laptop. When I did my measurements on the laptop, with the processor under roughly a 30% load, I was only seeing about 500 milliamps of power being consumed each hour. So in that particular case, the laptop is definitely the clear winner when it comes to power consumption. And this is critical if we are trying to build a system that we can run off of battery and solar for basically an indefinite period of time in the field. Now let's talk about the cost difference between the two systems. If you purchase the Evolve laptop at a micro center, you can pick those up for about 60 bucks plus taxes. If you buy it through Amazon, then you're going to end up paying somewhere around 90 to $100 plus taxes. With the laptop, that is actually everything you need to get started. So we get the computer, we get the monitor, we get the keyboard. It's also got a built-in real-time clock. The battery is already there, and it natively runs off of 12 volts, so we don't need any sort of buck converter to get us up and running. Now let's look at the Raspberry Pi. Let's talk about, uh, let's say, the Pi 4 4 gig model. If you can find those, and that is kind of tough right now as of late 2022, the things are still very hard to come by. You can't just walk into any store or jump over on Amazon and get one at a reasonable price. The normal price of that board should be roughly $55, but that's just for the bare board. Now we need to add a case to that board. If you use a case like I do that accommodates the power board, that is going to run you about 17 bucks for that case. Oh, speaking of the power board, we need the Maker Focus power board if we're going to run the Raspberry Pi off of 12 volts. Uh, the Raspberry Pi natively runs off of 5 volts, but that power board gives us the buck converter that allows us to run it from a 12 volt source. That board, the power board, well, that's another $22. We haven't even gotten to the monitor yet. If you want a monitor that's equivalent to the 11 inch monitor on the laptop, well, you're going to be looking at the EVI CIV 10 inch touchscreen monitor. That monitor is going to set you back about $135. So at this point, we're well over the $200 mark. 
So if you purchase the laptop at Micro Center, it's going to cost you three times more to get into a Raspberry Pi that's kind of equivalent to the laptop. If you purchased it off of Amazon, well, it's still going to cost you twice as much to get into an equivalent setup with the Raspberry Pi. Now let's touch on performance of both devices just really quick. I haven't done any benchmark testing, but I can tell you that neither of these is a hardcore gaming machine. What I can tell you though, is that I have run both of these in the field for ham radio specific things, and either one of these will serve you just fine in the field for ham radio. Now, you may be thinking that this is all bad news for the Raspberry Pi, I'm going to have to say, no, not really. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is still the clear winner in certain situations. For instance, uh, let's talk about in the shack. If you want to run an APRS Digipeter or maybe a WinLink gateway, the Raspberry Pi is still the clear winner in that particular case. We don't need the monitor attached to it. We can run in either of those cases. We can run the Raspberry Pi headless. And in fact, we don't even need to attach a keyboard or mouse to it after it's initially set up. It's much smaller than the laptop, so again, it's a better device to use in those particular cases. Another instance that you might still want to run the Raspberry Pi, let's talk about uh, the Raspberry Pi that I run in my Jeep Wrangler. That is mounted under the seat on top of the radio body, kind of tucked away out of sight and out of mind. If I need to use that Raspberry Pi though, I can grab a tablet and remote into it using the hotspot and VNC. Another place that it makes perfect sense to use the Raspberry Pi is in a kit like my 2 meter everyday carry kit where I need to keep that kit as small and compact as possible. The Raspberry Pi is the perfect tool in that particular application. Now, don't think that the laptop is a perfect device. It's not. It's a $60 laptop, and the build quality reflects that. Is it good enough, though, to carry into the field and an inexpensive device that you don't have to just be super worried about it getting broken? Absolutely. It does have some uh, drawbacks or some shortcomings, though. First of all, it's only got two USB ports on it compared to the Raspberry Pi's four USB ports. Depending on your particular setup, this may present a challenge for you, and it may not. With a radio like the 705, I get everything, cat control, audio, and GPS over one USB cable. If you go with a radio like the 891 and you're using uh, the Sombrant sound card, well, the radio itself is going to take up both USB ports, one for cat and one for audio. Doesn't leave you a open port to use for GPS, but you're going to have to look at that and see if that presents uh, challenges for you and how you might overcome them in your particular setup. Uh, one way you might want to overcome it instead of using a USB GPS device Maybe you just want to stream the GPS data off of your cell phone to the laptop. That would free up a, one of the USB ports. In my particular case with a laptop, I don't want to run Windows. In fact, that was the first thing that I stripped off of the laptop. I want to load Linux. And with Linux Mint, I lost the onboard audio in the laptop. Now, let me say there are like three, at least three, if not four different versions of this laptop. The very first version that came out of this, uh, the onboard audio works in Linux. I have revision two, and the onboard audio does not work in revision two or revision three. So, this may be a deal breaker for you, it may not be, but I definitely want to run Linux. I just know that I'm going to lose that onboard audio. Not a big deal as far as ham radio is concerned because we're going to be using external sound cards with our ham radio applications. Guys, as much as I love my beloved Raspberry Pi, change is constant. And you got to admit that a better mousetrap may come along. 
While the Pi still has a definite place in some instances, it may not always be the best choice. So going forward, I'm definitely going to be exploring this laptop. Am I going to abandon the Raspberry Pi? Absolutely not. Am I going to abandon build a Pi? Not a chance. But I do believe that this laptop may be a better choice to run in the field than the Raspberry Pi. Is it going to be for everyone? No. It's just something that I want to explore for a little while. If you found this information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.